Now I'm going to talk about uh, the video switcher, audio switcher setup. Um, this is, again, these are the kind of questions I like to uh, uh, get cleared with the uh, stage manager or whoever is running the actual uh, live event that I'm going to be broadcasting or webcasting in this case. Um, and, you know, again, just knowing how many speakers we're going to have is going to depend on what, what kind of audio boards and what kind of uh, video switcher I'm going to use. Um, one of the most important things that can be difficult to patch into live events is computer-based audio, and um, it happens usually at the last minute. Like, oh no, they'll tell me we're just doing PowerPoint slides, no, no one's doing embedded video, um, and so we don't have to worry about audio coming, because that's our laptop audio can be difficult to drive to both the room and a live webcast because if it's coming out over HDMI and then it's embedded over HDMI, you know, your typical audio switcher isn't going to be set up for handling HDMI. So you need a way to break that out and, and run it to the room. Usually I will use the Roland V60HD to run audio back out from the um, uh, from that switcher out to another uh, audio mixer so that it's available uh, to use in the room if I need it to be in the room. There's uh, any number of ways to conquer that problem, but it's probably the most important in question when I'm doing the kinds of live webcasts that I do is just where are all the audio sources coming from um, and making sure that I've got the hardware to support it during the live event. Um, of course, if I'm doing more advanced things like lower thirds, which is putting people's names uh, and titles and graphics, any kind of graphics during the live event, the, all the Roland switchers I use support uh, uh, DSK, direct screen keying uh, to do overlays, um, you know, based on a green or blue or whatever chroma key you want to use. And so getting uh, lower thirds well in advance of the event costs, that's, of course, that's added cost because someone has to prep those lower thirds, someone has to drive those lower thirds during the event. When I'm TDing, I, I'm often driving lower thirds as well as switching cameras, as well as monitoring live broadcasts. So um, if I've got the budget to have other team members there so that um, I don't have to be driving as much, then that's perfect. Um, prior to the live event, just again, more testing with uh, audio sync. I think that's probably one of the biggest issues when you isolate audio through a audio uh, mixer and you're bringing it into your video switcher is testing audio sync. You'll typically get anywhere from one to two to maybe even three frames of delay, depending on how many video sources you have. These days you don't need Genlock to have a multi-camera shoot. The video switchers will buffer one frame per video input, but that one frame can accumulate for each input depending on the design of the switcher. So you have to be able to dial it in. Most of the good switchers, uh, those from Roland, let you control that audio delay and you have to go in and usually I just, you know, I get these El Cheapo clappers from Amazon that we just do clapper tests and then um, going back, that's one of, the thing I, one of the things I love about the Odyssey that you don't find in the, the Shogun um, recorders. Um, or yeah, Atomos recorders is the ability to scrub audio while you're watching a playback of, of a recording. With the Odyssey, one of, and that's what I would, if I was doing this in a workshop, I would demo this for you with the actual Odyssey. I just don't travel with the gear for this, this session, but um, you can actually scrub and see your clapper peak while you're going frame by frame in the video. So I can do real time adjustments, uh, near real time adjustments um, when I'm, uh, doing clapper tests at a live venue. Uh, it will add up. I mean, you know, uh, you know if you see a delay, um, uh, you know, in your recording, it's going to pass through to all of your webcasts and everything else. And so that's another thing to keep in mind with your switching gear. Roland advertises that V60HD is being able to drive the room and your webcast or whatever you're doing with that switched output. But one of the problems there is if you start dialing it in with an audio sync delay, that will translate to the room too. Uh, it doesn't have a like the, you know the more expensive switchers will account for this because they'll they'll have discrete circuits to handle it. But if I start playing with audio delay and I'm right in front of the speaker, I'll hear a delay and it, it's really unnerving, right? It'll, it's almost like an echo. So be, that's that's why I always have a, a dedicated audio mixer for all my live events, so it can drive the room. I can add delay on the switcher, and no one in the room is going to be the wiser.